You know what you're looking at? Do you know what you're looking at? Which one do you choose? Now, there's some fools out there, the fools that say that it doesn't matter what color, what race Jesus was, are, 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 just, are just stupid. I mean, they're stupid, they're foolish. In the Bible language, they're foolish because the Bible says it's important what race or seed. Seed is race. This is two, two different races, two different seeds. Two different seeds, two different breeds, two different kind of people. Like Cain and Abel, two different kind of people. Like uh, Esau and Jacob, two different kind of people. Like uh, white and black, two different races. So which one do you choose? Which one do you choose or do you refuse? What did Joshua say? Joshua said um, something very interesting. Joshua uh, Old Testament Yeshua, Old Testament Joshua. He put an interesting proposal forward to the people of his particular time. This is after the people had come out of um, Egypt, or rather they had come out of the wilderness. It's in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. And you probably may have heard this refrain somewhere before. But it says right here, it says, um, if... And if it seemed evil to you to serve Yahweh, to serve yod Hey wow Hey, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Unfortunately, the choice has been made for the majority of generationally cursed black folks, niggas, that they choose the image that's on your right-hand side. But that's not the image that's on the right-hand side of God. They choose that blonde hair, blue eye, that recessive gene, that, that false Christ, that antichrist. That's the image of the beast right there. That's the false image. That's the counterfeit Christ. This guy, this Goyim, this Hebrew here, this is a... a truer image of Christ, according to the Bible, and the particular painting right there is by Vincent Barzoni. By Vincent Barzoni, we need to recognize great work of art and the, the great artists of past and present times. But back to Joshua, Joshua chapter 24. This was Joshua's last charge to Israel, similar to New Testament Yeshua, New Testament Joshua falsely called Jesus or Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. In verse 15, it says, And if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, let's qualify it, let's qualify it, to serve the true Lord, the black Lord, because remember, white supremacy, Masa, Masa also calls himself Lord, but Masa is not the Messiah. You see, this is Masa, this is Masa's son, right? This is Masa, and this is the Messiah. This is Antichrist, an image of the Antichrist, and this is an image of the Christ. Recognize, just recognize that for a moment. Meditate, meditate on that. Pause it for a moment and meditate on it. Allow your children to meditate on this choice. This is a very important choice right here. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, if it seems evil to you to serve the true Lord, what does Joshua say? Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, whether it was the gods. And, and in this time of Rastafari revelation, this, this, is, this is the image of the, of the gods that our lost sheep people the deadbeat black folks have been serving, and many of them still are vainly serving Antichrist, Lucifer, Satan, Diablos. It says, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites, this is the god of the Amorites. Here you go. This is the god of the Amorites. What's so very interesting about Amorites? Sounds a lot like Americans, doesn't it? Sound a lot like Americans. You know, Amora, Bamarinya, means a vulture. 
But let's go to uh, Genesis for a moment. Genesis chapter, let's go to Genesis chapter 15. Chapter 15. And we go to Genesis chapter 15. Something very interesting is, is, is said right here. And we're going to read it if you have not already read it. In Genesis chapter 15, let's go to verse, um, remember this is concerning the Abrahamic covenant, which is confirmed. A spiritual seed promise. In other words, there are spiritual black people, true black people, true born again. There is a new black man or a new Israel. Afro-Israel on the rise. A spiritual seed was promised, and we're seeing the first dawning lights of truth and rights in our present time. Here, in this particular chapter, if you recall, if you don't, then go and read it again. Um, Abraham, he asks, he asks Adonai Yahweh, or Adoni Elohim, he says, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it, because the Most High had told Father Abraham that he will inherit the land. You have to remember that at this time, Abraham was landless. He was without a land. See, this should have a lot of resonance to us as black people, especially as black men, that we are without our own land, the black sheep in the North Country, known as North America. And he said to him, and the true God said to him, Take me an heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he, speak of Abraham, he took to him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. Remember Christ makes a prophecy, uh, the true Christ, in, in, in Matthew chapter 24. He said that wherever the carcass is, you understand, there the vultures would be gathered together. You know, the vultures like an eagle. You know, it's like an eagle. Are you, are you getting these, these sim symbolism, these biblical symbolisms and type? Are you seeing the applications? Verse 12 says, and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. I really wonder about what that horror from Abraham's perspective was, that horror of great, of great darkness. Just for a moment, could it be darkness like this? the situation of his people in the latter time, or, 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 or darkness like that, you understand? Or darkness like this? Or perhaps it was darkness like this. That if you flip it, if you flip it for a moment, let's flip it. If you flip it, you will notice something very, very interesting. You know something very, very interesting when, when, when we flip it and compare it over here. If you flip it and compare it over here, you'll notice that basically this is a black man being crucified. You understand? A black man being, they're not lifting him up, they're keeping him down. Christ said, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men unto me. Let us return to this horror of great darkness that Father Abraham saw here in Genesis chapter 15. And it says, in horror of great darkness, great ignorance, you understand, a time of great ignorance, spiritual darkness fell upon him. And he said to Abraham, know of a surety, know for sure, for sure, that thy seed, shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. Now do the math. Some say it was 1,600 and something. If you do the math, 1,600, 2,000. So that time should have already been done. You remember what happened in 2000 in America, the election in 2000? 
the, okay, okay, let's explain this for a moment. When we do the math, when we do the math, they say that Christopher Columbus came in 1492, right? 1492. How many years? It's 400 years. 400 years to what? 400 years to 1892. What happened in 1892? The man child was born in the Jasagora Echopia, known as Lich Teferi, known as Ras Teferi, known as Negus Teferi, known as Kedamawi Haila Salase our kinsman redeemer, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king. In him, you will find the redeemer. Let's give you a visual of this so you can understand the significance of it because perhaps some don't know the truth of his imperial majesty, and this is why we need to minister the half of the story while there's still time before it's too late. It's this man we're speaking of. You understand? The ancient of days, all right? And see, he even has the right complexion, according to Revelation, the right kind of hair. He has that good black hair, that kinky hair, that good hair, right? Okay, so when we do the math right there, it's like that. Some say 1530, when Akhmet invaded Ethiopia, the African Zion. If we do 400 years from there, we have 1930. And 1930 was the coronation of this man, our kinsman redeemer, Ketamawi Haila Salase. So just doing the math, just doing the math right there is important for us to do the math. But let's go back to the 1600 date. That's when a lot of a lot of blacks and a lot of others say, okay, slavery was roughly sometime around sometime around 1600, right? Sometime around 1600. That's when they say. So if we go and look at it, after all, Pennsylvania, the White House is 1600, called 1600 too. There must be something with that. And who built the White House? We know it was it was black folks. You understand? It was it was Ethiopian Hebrews or niggers, Negroes and niggers. That's the byword, nigger, Negro. The byword for the Beta Israel. So, in verse 13, a prophecy is given to Father Abram that he is to know of a surety that his seed, that his seed, his race, that his race would be disgraced for a period of 400 years. I think we need to also get a, get a picture of Father Abraham. We need to bring up a picture of Father Abraham since this is like a word picture. This is like a word picture. We use this as an Abraham before, before he went to Egypt, and then we have a picture of Abraham after. But Father Abraham, all right, Abraham. Abraham saw this, 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 this horror, this, this unimaginable horror. And let's bring up this picture, too, of Father Abraham from um, the Ansarullah and Mom Issa, Dr. York. And they were right in exact with, with this level of teaching right here. Let's bring this up. All right, so we have Abraham, Abraham before, and Abraham after. All right, here's Father Abraham, Abraham. Let's show it side by side for for a reference right there. All right, so you have a visual, and the children have a proper visual of our ancestors. And it says in verse 14, and also that nation, so it's a nation that would do this to us, the Anglo-European, Gentile, Goyim nation, and also that nation whom they shall serve. Now, it's very clear. Are they going to dispute the fact that niggas have been serving white man, white supremacy for more than 400 years? Are they going to refuse that? He says, the word says, the Bible says, Genesis chapter 15 at verse uh, 14 says, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Will I. The I there is, is, is Elohim, Ha Elohim, the true God, Baruch Hu. He says he will judge that nation. So like Reverend Jeremiah said, no, 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 not God bless America, God damn America. This is the Bible right here. You know what I'm saying? And we're speaking from the perspective of the prophetic. And afterward, they shall they come out with great substance. See, they know this is so. This is why white supremacy is so vexed, because niggas know how to make those papers and try every sort of framing mischief by every sort of law to take away from niggas everything they got. 
You understand? Everything they got. If a nigga's driving a fancy, fine car, he must be a drug dealer. If he got a white girl in the car, he must be a pimp. You know what I mean? <laughs> so just to make you understand the, 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 the link, the bling bling and all these thing things, the great substance. Verse 15, it says, And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Now, verse 16 is what's important about this prophetic given to Father Abraham. When we get to verse 16, it says, But in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. They shall come hither again. WTF? They shall come hither again. You mean they're going to go through all that horror, all that darkness, all that misery, and then they're going to come hither, they're going to come to here some point again? What point is that? For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. The iniquity of the Anglo-Americans is not yet full. I mean, just take a look, and we're no Obama fan or supporter, but just just check out what's going on. Just check, 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 check out what's going on with Obama and the economy. They're blaming Obama for everything that happened before he was even born. You understand? He's the, they just hating on that nigga. And that nigga, politically speaking, he's done a lot of his presidencies, uh, a much better pre presidency in many ways, because a lot of the problems were before Obama. It were, were, were a systemic problem, part of the white supremacy uh, sh shit stem. You know what I'm saying? The shit stem of the system. But here's what I want you to focus on concerning Abraham and this prophecy. It says, but in the fourth generation, they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Now, we can go into the Amorites and link the Amorites to the, to the, the British, the British and, 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 and Great Britain and to the daughter of, of the British, which is the American, the American daughter, and, and link them to the European because we all know that the, the ancestral homeland of white folks, you know, like white folks need to go back to their ancestral homeland. Europe is in a desperate situation right now. It needs the white people who are scattered around in these other countries to go back to Europe and to, to build Europe so the, the immigrants can go back to their countries and, and build up their countries too. The white man just being so lazy now. I mean, he did a lot of work, iniquitous work, but he did a lot of work before. And he's, he's getting really, really lazy right now. You understand? And that's why his whole system is collapsing. But he's still got that iniquity, yo. Iniquity means rebellion. Just think about reconstruction for a moment, niggas, black people, my African Americans. Think about um, uh 1860. Newt Gingrich is trying to remind niggas. He says this election's gonna be like 1860. He's been talking about that a lot, like 1860. Michelle Bachman compared Obama's presidency, said that after a hundred years ago, Emancipation Proclamation, that is it's worse off for for black folks now than it was back in slavery. And, and they're talking about Gingrich, talking about make your niggas, your nigga kids um, um, work cleaning toilets and stuff like that because they don't got no work ethic. They don't, they don't have no example of work ethic. And you know why, niggas? It's because you don't want to tell your nigga children about their real history and show how much our people have worked. You understand? Know have worked for white supremacy. But all these, all these are signs of what we call the Willie Lynch election. Yes, I know Herman Cain is out of it. If you go back to that video, Willie Lynch election, people say, oh, Herman Cain is out of it, so that prophecy ain't no going to come true. You, you must have misinterpreted what our prophecy was. In fact, that they did to, to Herman Cain, what they did to Herman Cain just proves our basic point. But you can't take that back now. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full, is not yet full. That means that something, something would happen even after that 400 years. So we are past 400 years now, however you look at it. From our calculation of 400 years, 1492, 400, 1892, the birth of Lij Teferi, the birth of Ras Tefari, our kinsman redeemer in Ethiopia and the prophecy by 
Reverend James Morris Webb, look to Africa where a black man will be crowned king and him you will find the redeemer. That prophecy which Marcus Garvey would also say, look to the east where a black man will be found, a black man will be king. Um, the day of redemption is, is near or the day of redemption is here according to Marcus Garvey's um, version of it. But dealing with the dates and time, 1592, I mean 1492, 400 years, we have 1892. We can say 1530 from the Ethiopia perspective, 400 years. We have 1930. Or to take the common um, African-American um, speculation, 1600. If we go to 1600 to say that's when the slavery began around about 1600, you add 400 years. But I think the best evidence actually is the fact that uh, Queen Lizzie Witch, uh, Elizabeth, 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 you know, the one from England, the Queen of England, she came over here recently when, when uh, Bush was president for the 400th anniversary of the founding of the Jamestown um, colony. In, in Virginia for the four. Now, when you connect that with Willie Lynch's How to Make a Slave, it becomes very clear that we are in that prophetic time period. In other words, the time is now. You understand? We're living in the time period right now for the prophetic fulfillment or the prophetic unfoldment of that particular prophecy. And if you look at many of the different signs from many of the different perspectives, only a fool or ignoramus would not recognize that we are living in biblically prophetic times. So we're in biblically prophetic times right now. All right? So let's go forward with this choice that niggas got to make. And you understand? To stay deadbeat niggas, you understand, or to be born again. Let's go back to Joshua's. Joshua's choice and the choice that we present once again for you all. Um, Joshua chapter 24. So when it says, and if it, seem, and if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, to serve the Lord, the true Lord, the true Adonai, the true Yahweh, the true Son, the Bain Ha Elohim, instead of Antichrist, you see, Revelation chapter 13 is talking about this one here, Antichrist. It's the wrong image, and it's also the, the bad fruit. Let's look at the fruit. It says, let's not judge. It's because don't just judge by the image, the, the cover. Let's look at the fruit. What is the fruit of white supremacy? Need we show you those pictures of lynching and slavery and, and, and in human horrors? Again, for you to remember. Choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, in whose land you dwell, of the Anglo American, the Anglo Amorites, in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. We will serve Yahweh. That's what the people said in Joshua, Joshua chapter 24, right? That's what the people are, are, are here, excuse me, hear what the people said, right? Hear what the people said. This is what Joshua said to the people. He said, for me and for my house. I don't know about you niggas. It's like he said, I don't know about you niggas. You understand? But I'm going to serve the true God. You understand? I'm going to serve our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Y'all can keep on serving white supremacy. Y'all can keep on serving a bar Jesus, you know, the sorcerer. Y'all can keep on serving that one. Y'all can keep making it. This is making a deal with the devil. Y'all can keep making that deal with the devil. You understand? But verse 16 says, And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord, that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other gods. This is what our ancestors, black folks, our ancestors said this. Because, see, niggas want to ask, how come we black people, how come black people are going through all the shit that we're going through? Why are we always, why, 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 why? Why, 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 why? They want to cry, cry, cry. Why are we going through this? 
and your preachers and pastors have been faithless, have been false shepherds. They haven't led ones to the real truth of the Bible and the Word. So the Almighty has chosen us and chosen others to represent his case, to prosecute his case, to make his case. So the people said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt. Every time I see the land of Egypt and spiritual Egypt, I think about D.C. I think about Washington, D.C. And those who understand that connection can understand why Revelation says spiritual Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and amongst all the people through whom we pass. In other words, look at our experience as black folks. It's not white Jesus that has saved us. It's the true Christ that has saved us. It's even Christ in his kingly character that has saved us, has preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we pass. Verse 18, and Yahweh drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwell in the land. It's interesting because we see that also in some sense over here in this experience where black folks started coming to money, so they started to buy up white people's homes and properties and other things, and white folks had to move out in the suburbs that had a lot of toxic dumping, so forth and so on. You know what I'm saying? Therefore, will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. But I want you to hear what Old Testament Yeshua, Old Testament Joshua said. He said to the people, ye cannot serve Yahweh, Baruch Hu. You can, you, you niggas, let me, let me show you right here. Let me show you right here, right? It's like, right, you niggas cannot serve. Let's bring this up for a moment. Or oh, oh, we can actually bring up uh, Rabbi Matthews. Rabbi Matthews, in case you don't know, hopefully now you'll begin to know, right? Here's what, because he's a kind of a Joshua type for us, Rabbi Matthews. He's like a Joshua type for us. So when you understand the, our history and the history of the Hebrew Israelite movement, you can see he's like, a, he's like a Joshua for us. He said to the people, ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. See, the qualification why the niggas can't is because they're, they're serving unholy standards. They're serving white standards, the worship of Baal, of Balaam. And Joshua is saying you cannot serve Yahweh. You can't serve the he who is who he is, for he is Kedus. He's a Kedus Amlach. He's a, he's a Kedus Elohim. He is a jealous God. Now, for, for you niggas, and this connection with the whole black woman thing, you remember Obra? Remember Obra Win Windy? Obra Windy, Obra, o Oprah Winfrey? She said in one of her famous things all over the Internet and stuff like that, the nominal Christian church and the church and people are really on top of her about what she said. She said that she was in church and the preacher talked about God is a jealous God. And she said, why does God be jealous of me? Why would God be jealous of me? And she, she, so she thought, Oprah thought that God was jealous of her, Oprah, right? And she said this is one reason why she went away from the old rugged cross, so forth and so on. That's what she said. She went away. <laughs> Let's bring that up. Oprah went away from the old rugged cross. She went away from the old rugged cross and everything because she said that in her old opinion, old Pra, old Bra said that she, she wondered why God was jealous of her. Now, when you read the Bible and he says that he's a jealous God, right, and you hear old Bra talking, she sounds like a fool. She sounds like a real fool because she's saying that she's thinking God is just jealous of her. She didn't say, God, why would God be just of us or whatnot like that? Because then maybe she would have understood the context. It's like she don't under, for all that reading stuff she'd be doing, that reading rainbow that she'd be doing on her, on her show and so forth and so on, she really doesn't, she doesn't have reading comprehension. You know, a lot of folks can read, but they really can't comprehend.